What's going on guys? Blue Suit Reviews, another video. Got a very special video for you today. Special for you, but a complete pain in the butt for me. Stay tuned so you can see what I'm talking about. just uh, turned out to be a, a big pain in the ass for me to have to replace a radiator but what can you do when you do a lot of your own maintenance so that's what's happening right there when I bought the car a few months ago the 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 first day I got it home I noticed that there was some water leaking from radar where the radiator was if you know the the Mopar radio radiators, and I don't know, it, it probably could be every radiator. But if you look, there is a hose. Excuse the mess. I know I got tools and stuff everywhere because it's, it's pretty much consumed a lot of my my hours in the garage. Uh, but you see this hose right here. So this is a this is a vent hose, I believe. And what I assumed is that there was some condensation that had built up inside of the radiator and this vent hose had let that condensation out. Well, come to find out, this is not really a vent hose. Uh, well, this is a vent hose, but the vent valve is right here. And I think it turns. I think you have to put some good pressure on it to turn. And what that does is when you turn it, it allows you to drain the radiator. So there should have been nothing coming out of this hose unless you turn the valve but I didn't know that I just kind of brushed it off like you know it's uh, it should be fine well after driving in one day I get home and I notice that there is antifreeze running out from under my car and I get under there and I go yeah I hope that's not what I think it is and of course it is the radiator is leaking. Uh, it's, and when I checked, when I pulled the, so this radiator has a, a support bracket that goes underneath it. There's a big long rod that's underneath the car right now under the new radiator. But when I pulled the support bracket down, I noticed the radiator fluid all the way up this seal on this side plastic piece right here. So it's actually leaking out in between where this plastic piece is sealed to the actual aluminum fins of the radiator. So that's, that wasn't good. No bueno for that. Needless to say, I had to source me a brand new radiator. Uh, shout out to Mopar Giants, which is where I got the radiator from to go back into the car. Uh, the radiator came with everything that I needed. It was an exact Mopar replacement Hellcat radiator. Had all of the clips, all of the hoses. Like it, it pretty much had everything. I take that back. It didn't have the hoses, but it did have all of the clips. I just used the hoses from the car already since they looked great and they weren't cracked or anything like that. Uh, but additionally, I took this as an opportunity to add a couple of modifications. Well, add one modification, and that is I put a 180 thermostat in here. So I figured if I'm going to have to take the entire front clip off, which uh, I, I was not able to find a better way to replace the radiator on the, the Dodge Challenger or the Hellcat except taking, taking the front clip off. And I also found out that 
this model car for Dodge is not the only car that that you you that is advisable to take the front bumper off to get to the radiator, which I do not like. So if we had to put that on a list of things that that I don't like, I don't like that you have to take the front clip off, or it's best to take the front clip off to get to the radiator. And the reason is because uh, you have to unscrew the I think this is a power steering cooler and the condenser, the air conditioning condenser, and the low C transmission cooler from the radiator, which is way in the back back here. And then after the radiator, there's the radiator fan right behind it. So all of this stuff has to come apart. So this bolt has to come out. This bolt down here has to come out. That bolt has to come out, and that bolt all have to come out to to separate each one of these radiators and make enough space for the engine radiator, the engine coolant radiator, to go out through the bottom of the car. Complete nightmare to do that, but I got it done. I had to I had to use a lot of tools to get this done, which is which is a testament to purchasing tools. If you're going to do your garage maintenance like I do, like you, you are going to have to have a good collection of tools. You don't have to have mechanic grade tools, but you got to have some good stuff to, to do this because you are not going to be able to get this stuff done if you don't have right tools. Point, this tool right here was absolutely invaluable this whole time. And th this is not something you need. This is a hose clamp tool. You don't need this. But if you're going to be dealing with those really hard, uh, I don't even know what the, drop it like that. I don't even know what those clamps are made out of that are on the hoses. These right here. If you're dealing with these, it is a great idea to get a hose clamp tool. It was $39 on Amazon. And I, like I said, it was invaluable. I would not been able to move the hoses and the, the radiator has two big hoses one that goes into the radiator right here and then there's another one way at the bottom that goes into the bottom of the radiator so anyway uh, just wanted to give an update I know I haven't made a video in probably about two and a half three weeks and that's because I've been trying to fix rat cat so right now where I'm at I've already started the car I've already tested to make sure that everything is good. I did, I did uh, make sure that the T, the thermostat, the T180 is working properly. I did get the engine up to about 176 degrees. And once I got it to 176, the radiator fluid started flowing, the fan turned on, and it stayed, the engine temperature stayed right at about 176 degrees. 70, between 176 and 179 degrees. So this is working perfectly. Uh, I will post a link to where I got this below. I don't remember the company that I got it from, but I'll, I'll post a link to that. I think it was about uh, $40, $39 for the, the, the 180 thermostat. But it's working great. Anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. Blue Suit Reviews, as usual, hit the, the like button, share, subscribe. Uh, still getting ready for these car shows that are coming up. I am significantly set back because of, <laughs> because of this. I actually also missed some car shows in between. This, I mean, this is going to happen. Stuff like this is going to happen, especially when you have an older car like I do, uh, 2015 in the year 2020. Uh, but you cannot get angry like all you can do is is look for an opportunity to improve the situation which is what i did i went ahead and sourced my own parts it took less than one week to get the radiator make sure you follow me on instagram i'm gonna make sure that i start posting some stuff uh, i should have been posting all along but uh, i was actually spending every spare minute that i could in the garage making sure that the car was getting fixed and that i was able to get the car fixed in enough time to continue to get it ready for July 5th. I appreciate you tuning in. Blue Suit Reviews. I will see you in the next video.